All right, um, let's get into it. I am going to time it, which is why the timer is on the screen. Uh, I don't know why it's black. Live split doing its thing. So, Undune 2, we're up to version 1.4 now. Uh, it's had some great updates, had a lot of work on it um, over the last few weeks, couple of months. Um, <coughs> excuse the throat, I don't know what's going on today. Hey Joe, thanks for coming by and thanks for the good luck. Let's, let's see how we go. So, the speedrunning rules for Dune 2, the actual original game, are that the time starts when you uh, click proceed or whatever it is to, to once you've actually selected the house that you play. So I'll follow the same rules for Undune 2 just to keep it uh, consistent. So that will be 3, 2, 1, go. Now, I'm going to do something a little strange just to demonstrate. I guess a feature of uh, Pico 8. So Pico 8 is the platform on which this game has been written. And it's... It's kind of like a, a really modern Game Boy. It's got a low resolution. It's only 128 by 128. I think it's a 16 color palette, so it's pretty basic. Um, <clears throat> and the controls for this game make more sense once you understand the controls for a Pico 8 system. And it's, like I said, it's like a, it's like a Game Boy. It's up, down, left, right, and then two buttons. Um, those two buttons are Z and X. X is kind of like yes, Z is no. Um, the advantage of having such a simple control system is that it's actually playable with whatever controller you have to hand. You don't you don't have to use a keyboard or mouse, although you can. Um, as example, I'm using a Gravis gamepad here. It's got up, down, left, right, and the least two buttons. Um, I only only get to use this for a couple of missions because it's you know the easier ones. Uh, you do really want a mouse once you get into the harder stuff. Um, but the game is really gentle enough that you could play it entirely with, you know, a gamepad or a keyboard. Yeah, it's a cool little... little innovation. Ah, and Liquid Dream UK here in the chat. This is actually the fellow who's written this game, so say hello. Um, he's going to be sitting there sweating because I've spent the last couple of weeks picking his game apart. But he has honestly done an absolutely fantastic job at some... Um, you know, recreating Dune 2 as a little game here. Um, especially given the limitations of the Pico 8 system. Which are pretty harsh in terms of memory, the amount of code you're allowed to use. It's like a, there's actually like a hard limit on the number of lines of code or something, and the number of objects you can use. So the fact that it's possible to even reproduce a game of this complexity on such a system is incredible. So, this is obviously mission one in Dune 2, where the objective is simply get a thousand credits. Um, if you were to speedrun the original game, the way to finish the way to properly speedrun uh, mission one is simply to start the mission, wait for your credits to drop from a thousand to nine hundred ninety-nine, as happens, you know, at a random point during the game, and then just restart the mission. Let the timer clock up to about two minutes, and then the mission just ends because you end up with a thousand credits at the end of that time. Uh, Paul has solved it in a slightly different way with this one. You just start with nine hundred ninety-nine credits in mission one. And you don't actually have to drive around and uh, kill all these other enemies. I could actually tell my helpers to actually. I'm doing a speed ride. I should tell them to do this. And that's it. <clears throat> Mission one, three minutes. That'll do. Could be mashing the keys to get through the menus and so on. Right. Mission two. Same kind of thing. Um, we need to get 2,700 credits. So 2,700. 
or we can go and attack the enemy base. Oh great, the sandworms has come along and eaten one of my guys straight away. And... <laughs> so the sandworm in this game, I actually really love this implementation. It's... Uh, in standard Dune 2, it's essentially another unit on the map which can drive around, it can eat things, um, you can kill it, in theory. But it takes a lot of firepower, so you really only, you, re you, can't, you really can't do it until you've got tanks later on in the game. And it disappears after it eats three units. Not so in this game. This game, you cannot harm the sandworm. It just does its own thing. It's its own indomitable thing. It's impossible to do anything with it except just go to rock. He's probably going to eat my harvester here. It's a little hard to show. There we go. This is not optimal for a speed run. Is it worth doing something different here? Yeah, the the sandworm also doesn't really like it. It doesn't obviously chase a particular unit. So me doing this, I don't think is actually giving it a decoy to chase. I could be wrong. He's been very cagey with stuff like this. Ah, crap, and now I've... No! It ate my worm... It ate my harvester, so... This is gonna be tough. This is gonna be a very long mission, too. Especially because I've just pissed off the enemy. Um... What can I do to speed this up? <laughs> I have to build another refinery because it's the only way to get more harvesters in mission 2. So, you're gonna come home. This will take me down to about zero credits, but I have to do this. It's, it's gonna be too slow otherwise. While that's happening, let's go for a bit of a drive. You see, so there is some spice down here, so if the worm ends up, you know, living up here, I guess we can try and focus down here. But yeah, this is, this is the way the worm is in this game, it's just... Rock is the only defense. You have to keep your units on rock, and you have to harvest spice in the sand, it's just the way that it the way it's set up. Hey Toy Yako, how's things? So I'm gonna have to keep them returning pretty often. Just because I can't risk the worm coming back. And just, you know, eating a harvester when it's got 99% full. Okay, we'll go there. That's that's cool too. The good thing is now that we have the three refineries, we have enough storage space for all the credits we need to harvest. The only possible flaw on the planet at this point is if the enemy suddenly decide they want to come and attack. I don't know what the timing of that is just yet. There's been some changes to the enemy AI and the way that they attack and the way that all generally happens. Um, but I haven't had a chance to really test that yet. Um, 
You're driving a rov. That's that's a cool way to spend a Sunday. No, I didn't mean to do that. Just harvest. So this is still a thing. Um, refinery doesn't stop flashing if a unit gets told not to go there anymore, but... Considering the volume of things that have been fixed and modified, not a problem. That's a good deal. So what else to talk about here? Um, not much since it is still mission two. The enemy base is up here somewhere. Uh, and you can see this guy down here is sort of standing sentry. Uh, mission one and two have a much smaller map in June two. And it makes sense to, I guess, to reproduce that in this. Um, so, due to the limitations of Pico 8, the way that's implemented is it's only the top left quadrant of the radar that actually works. Like if I zoom all, go all the way down to the bottom right, that's where it stops. Uh, the way that was handled in Dune 2 was that the pixels that are on the radar just simply got doubled into the space. being a bit slack about keeping on top of these guys. But from the next mission onwards, it's the entire radar screen. Is that going to be enough? It better be enough, because the worms come back. Yes. Okay, this point, changing back to the mouse. Now, I'm not putting concrete down for most of the buildings yet. It's not... Excuse me. It's not that crucial just yet. The only effect it has is that structures start with 50% health, which is essentially what the original game did anyway. Good, that is our spice. So mission three, we have to destroy the enemy base. That's that's the objective, no matter what. Um, so what we will do is build up a quick little uh, spice refining operation here. Um, do I want a third one? I think I want a third one. Still can't build our own harvesters yet, so we have to build more refineries to get at them. And that is neatly all the money we're given at the start of this mission. I'm not going to bother with the radar just yet. Just because what's going on is simple enough that I probably don't need it. And I hope I've given myself enough space around here for the harvesters to... You know, do that thing. So, what we need to do is get some light vehicle factories down. Harvester operations are a lot quicker in Undune. It's a lot more straightforward. Uh, which is really good, because it's, like I said, it's a bit of a gentler game. It, it is Dune 2, but it's a little bit easier. Um, which it should be. It's, it's, it's a more casual version of the game, and I really like it. These guys are just going to have to keep coming back and back and back. We're going to start building quads out of both of our factories here. 
I love that it shows the stats. So the price, I guess that'll be armor and then that'll be attack. It's a really good little system. So once we start getting... Ah, I learnt my lesson in an earlier testing game. Keep everything on the rock. Oh, that was interesting. I had two harvesters stacked there. Bring these guys back. So, the original game, Dune 2, had some interesting limits. It had a unit limit of 25 per side. And then... Yeah, there he goes. So sometimes you, you, you can click on the radar to tell a unit to go somewhere. Sometimes it can take a second or two for that to actually start happening. So the unit cap has been reproduced in this game. But it always doesn't need it. Uh, in an earlier testing version where the unit cap was programmed a little differently, at one point I had about 40 quads. Uh, on the screen, in this mission actually, are uh, all streaming towards the enemy base. And these guys go slowly. And it wasn't until, wasn't until after about 30 units had been told to move that the game started to struggle with all the pathfinding and everything. Uh, which is actually really impressive. He's basically reproduced pretty closely the logic and the, re the limitations of this game. Alright, I'm going to start looking for some rock to use as a staging point. And it might be this. Actually, radar would be useful, so let's... At this point... Okay, units are stacking a little bit. Still driving around each other, but I think they're stacking a little bit. The wind trap, so we can tell. Got enough power, should have enough power for radar. The music has changed, we've got a bit of a conflict going on. One of our guys is just eaten by a quad, that's fine. We'll just keep building units here. Alright. Now this is starting to feel familiar. If I was playing Dune 2, I'd be massive, you know, not massively, but um, continually mashing M to move or A to attack. Um, this game's control scheme is a little bit closer to CNC in that you just click on a unit, click where you want it to go, or click where you want it to attack. Uh, it is still one by one, so one unit at a time in terms of being controlled. There's no, like, I can't click and drag, you know, and select everyone here, but... Um, radar a bit more to move around. Okay. Let's get it going down here. So in terms of prioritizing base attacks, uh, in standard Dune 2, especially in version 1.07, you would want to prioritize the enemy construction yard because they do aggressively rebuild structures that are lost. Here though, it's a bit simpler. I don't think there's actually code to rebuild structures that have been destroyed. So it's actually more about hitting the production facilities. And interestingly, the uh, 
repair facility once you're up to that. So, we're going to take out their light factory to stop them building new uh, attack units. Start bringing these guys down here. While he's got those units distracted, these guys are going to come and attack the outposts. The enemy can and does repair structures. But I think the rate of that has been tweaked a little bit. Oh, this is another cool feature. A lot of things are a little bit more automatic. So because he's been damaged beyond, you know, his threshold, he's running off home. <clears throat> In fact, he's going to be useful because he can start helping me with this guy. Who I think must have been dropped by a carrier? I've not actually seen the, the, the ambush replacement thing happen yet. I've always been looking somewhere else. But that must be what's happened, because that guy did not walk around the side of the map while I was doing all this. So some of the automatic movement does make the game feel a little bit like herding cats. At times. Especially because I told these guys to attack this, which is just there, but then... Yeah, I don't know what they're doing. Oh, the worms has eaten one of my units. I think the worm might have been made a little bit more aggressive. Okay, cool. Let's just attack this little bevy of units. Ah, unable to create more. There we go, we've hit the unit cap. Which is a little annoying because that's that now includes these damaged units that are just going to run away and cost a bit of time. So I guess part of the strategy for this game is managing units fleeing, you know, coming home from the battlefield. You attack from there. You guys can come and cover the attacks going on here. We'll do like a two-pronged approach around the sides of the base. Okay, cool. This is going well. So that's interesting. I'm clicking the refinery to say go and attack it, but the harvester itself on the refinery is not flashing. So in the original game, when you destroy uh, a refinery that has a harvester in it, that harvester is just lost. Um, this game handles it differently. The Harvester is just a separate thing. And... It's interesting. Okay. Randomization of the number of... Soldiers that pop out of a building. That seems pretty spot on now. I think these guys are losing a little bit because they have to attack the top left. Or... Or they're, they're aiming at the top left but they're attacking in the middle. Alright, that's... Three missions done. Let's keep going. <clears throat> right. Uh, not going to use concrete just yet. Again. That becomes more important when we want structures to be more resilient from the start. Actually, we use a little bit to get some... The hell with it. It's it builds really quickly in this game. And is actually kind of convenient, so maybe I will use it a bit. Right. So something that tripped me up a bit during testing, this is not spice, this is just hills. That's hilly terrain. Uh in fact. There's not a lot of spice over here. It looks like there is, but it's all actually hills. Um. 
So really what we want is harvesting over here. Because I think there's some spice over here. Uh, I'll pop this guy down here. And he's going to go for that because that's the closest spice. Yeah, so this is going to be a slow mission because we're going to be fairly starved for money. Right. So this is the first mission where we get tanks. We get the heavy factory and we get to build tanks. We do get to build harvesters, so I don't think I'll build any more refineries. And if I say I'm going to do something and then I don't do it, it's just because I'm... You know, the strategy is going to evolve. This is the first time I've certainly speedrun uh, Undune 2. I don't know if anyone else is attempting it at the moment. Um, but I do know that this game is not yet on speedrun.com. So... Hopefully once I've finished this run, I'm going to submit that and it's going to be added as a game. Because it's definitely a, a different category to Dune 2 itself. Okay. Light Factory will rush to the Heavy Factory now. And when I talk about this game being a bit more automatic than the original, the Harvesters just go and do their thing. They are always hunting spice. Uh, it doesn't matter if the nearest spice is, you know, three screens away, they will just drive to it. Uh, which is much nicer because in the original game, if your harvester was, you know, if, if spice ended up being four or five squares away from your refinery, the harvester would just stop being automatic. And there'd be this awkward period in the middle of the game, uh, early middle game, where you still had to very carefully manage your own spice harvesting just because you had so many harvesters, you needed so much money, but you couldn't get it automatically quickly because the harvesters just weren't doing their thing. Um, and you'd be doing that until you got to the point in the game where you could build carryalls and get everything happening automatically. This game just does it for you. So yeah, so they move up here. Something just happened to my headset. I'm going to... For that from the headset. So I've got a bit, a bit of a strange setup for streaming at the moment. I've got um, my actual microphone up here that's just above what you can see, and that's actually what's recording my voice, but then I'm using the headphones for actually playing the game. So that's why you can see there's a microphone. There is actually a microphone on this headset, but I'm not using it for this. That microphone I use for work calls. Just because it's such a long way to drive from the spice, I'm going to let both of these guys fill up before they start coming down. Here we go. These guys, because they're fairly useless for base defense, I'm going to just get them to like staging points so that when I'm up to going for the enemy base, uh, that just happens. Oh look, it's a spice bloom. This is what I was looking for. There we go. Now, first thing we have to do with this is build a couple more harvesters. So is that now the closest spice, or is that? That is. But this should be the closest spice for this guy. We come over here. Look at one of those. Let's get... Let's just... Okay, I'm going to play this semi-casually, so I'm not going to rush and do stuff without um, 
radar. I'm going to try and keep radar in each mission. Just because it's a little bit nicer to watch. Um, and it does make it a little bit easier to play, obviously, when you can see what's going on. But in a more hardcore speedrun, you wouldn't bother. Oh, this is an early attack. And the troopers are much faster than my soldiers. Okay. This is new. This is very new. Is that all my... Put them up there. here. Let's start bringing some back down. This run may or may not get interrupted by my cat. There you go. Now, what else have we got? This one. That's basically everything we're going to need, so let's start building tanks. Because we're starting to build up the army now, let's get our scouts walking slowly. I think we'll leave the quads back at the base as like a moving uh, base defense. I'll get one trike up there as well. Keep the flow of tanks. We definitely got enough money now. Great. At least this is a game that I can play one-handed because I'm now kind of cradling a cat. She's gonna watch. This is Abby, by the way. Her name is Abby. Yes, hello. Finally, I have a game that I play that I can play one-handed while this cat demands attention. Okay, I think the base is over here in this corner. No, it'll be a little further along. There it is. the factory the other stuff is up here and there's a lot of wall around oh look and here's a soda car so they do just sport up there. I guess they're meant to start walking down at some point, but... Sadaka Infantry. I'm pretty sure they're meant to be heavy troopers. Well. And why is one of them green on the map? That was odd. Anyway. Let's get... Tankin. 
Yeah, there's a green square on the radar up there. I don't know what's going on there. There should not be any autos units on this map. Okay, units are still being deselected if they're attacked when they're below that repair threshold. But that's okay, I can work around that. Let's let's get all these little defensive units out of the way. And then we'll do something really mean to the pathfinding in this game. So I'm going to tell all of these guys to go up here, and there's like two paths for them to go to. Take out this defender as well. Well, he's just doing his own thing. See how this works. So I'm all to go up there. Okay, so he just kind of stopped, but everyone else made their way up there. That's that's good. He's going on a much longer drive. That's a worry, the Harvester is... What was that? Was he... Th was that a retreat? That's off you go. Because that Harvester was only at about 70% um, full. So this is interesting, I don't think it's an intended thing, but what's going on here is that I'm getting, you know, that enemy tank came here and attacked some stuff, and then because I'd, I guess after I told a bunch of my units to go after him, squish, uh, he kind of acted as a bit of a decoy. Let's get this refinery out of the way. Gotta remember to keep bringing tanks up. And the Spice Lost build silos message is still kind of overtaking everything else. In June 2, I might have stopped that by Telling my harvest to go, tell, tell my harvest to go, just basically and go and park. You can't do that in this game because they'll just go back to what they were doing, which is harvesting. Right. Let's go after this now. And it's useful to come back and do this where it wasn't in June 2 because stuff that was off screen would move slower. So you kind of had to commit to whatever forces you had on screen. This guy's shadow is sometimes appearing above. Yeah, like certain animation frames and directions, his shadow is appearing above it. is happening here. Let's get this guy to run over some sort of car. Wow, that guy must have just 
And again, luckily ducked between the tank tracks or something. There we go. Should be at the construction yard going down shortly. These guys will just get on the uh, wall here. Okay, so 40 minutes, and that's mission four. I'm happy with this progress. I'm not sure if running over that infantry created that, um, that crater in the sand. I don't know what happened there. Okay, mission five. Now it starts to get interesting because now we get the repair facility. We get God, because the because the concrete builds so quickly, I have to deal with it telling my units to move around. It's annoying. Um, <clears throat> we have a lot of stuff gets introduced in these missions. So we get rocket turrets, rocket no, not rocket turrets, but rocket tanks. Soul tanks, um, we get the repair facility, we get the high tech so we can build carryalls. So, this is where the game starts to get curious. Oh, he's just helpfully blown up a spice bloom for me. That's good. I like that behavior. Um, in the original game, a unit, if you told it to go over a path that happened to include a spice bloom, it would just run into it and die. Um, I guess it's a happy accident of how this game was programmed. Spice blooms are counted as like a, a thing on the map, it's like an actual thing you can click on and select. And units avoid it. Which makes sense, because you'd think a savvy, you know, desert tank commander is not going to drive his tank into a thing that's going to immediately make him explode. You would think. Let's get... We'll rush to sort of unit production so we get the factories out of the way. Because we've got... we don't have to worry about the... harvesting operations just yet. I'd have to watch that back, but something funny that happened there. I think did... Did this guy drive into that refiner and then appear there? I don't know what that was. Yeah, there's the high tech, there's the heavy factory, there's the repair. I think we get turrets after we've built the outpost. Slight change of plan here. Oh no, so I've, I've used all that money on building... Okay, this is a funny quirk of this game. Um, you don't actually get the money... You don't get money back from structures you've partially built. It remains partially built in your queue and paused until you come back to it. Uh, that, I understand, is a limitation of the platform. And generally the way this game is coded, so... So, I'm not going to do what I did stupidly in an earlier test run of this, um, which is to put the heavy factory here, even though it's a nice obvious space for it, it is very vulnerable there to missile tank attack. Before we do that, let's get... Can I build walls? Where are the walls? Do I have to build an outpost to build walls? I should be building harvesters. That's what this is for. Alright. Thanks to my own lack of uh, coordination, this is going to be a bit of a slow burner of a mission. 
problem is you just don't have the economy straight away to start building stuff, which makes sense, but... You know, and I don't think there's an, e an easy way to solve it, it's just the way that this game plays, it's... Yeah. Alright, I'll start making sure the tanks are close in to the base now. Because I don't know what the timing is going to be of attacks and things. Surely we have enough... Enough in the harvesters now for a couple more harvesters. And at that point, the economy starts branching out. Still on pause. Okay, we should be good now. The outpost is a fairly sturdy structure, so that we're going to put out the front. Minus 30 power, okay. Right, and we can now build walls. So the, I don't think the walls are hidden behind the outpost in the tech tree normally. We can, we can build launches, we can build tanks. And I saw in the changelog for this game, there is now in fact a minimum range for the missile tanks. So actual combat tanks may still be quite necessary in the army. Because um, in the one of the earlier implementations of the rocket tanks in this game, they just had not only good accuracy, but they also had a huge range, but then no minimum range like they do in Dune 2. So, in this mission, you would simply build, you know, a massive fleet of missile tanks. And then... That would be it. I'm not too worried about the wind trap being, you know, near the front of the base. I'm gambling. I'm gambling that target prioritization is going to be for the outpost. So while we've got some spare cash here, let's start getting some launchers up and running. And a carry all two, I suppose. Uh... Now I'm going to pop a wall down in this little lost spot here. Because so the next thing I'm going to do is check out the repair behavior. Because that apparently has changed. Oh, these are the first launcher. I like clearing fog of war from the map, but I do, we don't need to do it for the entire thing. Let's get the repair down. Let's get those two come home. And we'll get some silos up as well, because they're quite cheap. Again, that's a gamble. Six and thirty-two. Okay. Right, that should be all the structures that we need. There goes the first aerial. It's pretty cool watching them do their work. Right, let's just start getting carryalls now. We'll start moving some offensive units up the front. Let's get 
these guys on their death march. Combat tank will pop up the front as well. What did I do with the launcher? He's up here. So it can see the furthest of any unit. So it's a great lumbering scout, essentially. Uh-oh. Front row. Okay, this is this is interesting. <laughs> the launcher is also extremely powerful. Is that that is a quad? Oh, and he's just being picked up for repair. I wonder if he'll come back to the same spot. Let's scout a little so we can see when that happens. Yes, that is cool. Okay, I'm really picking fights here. This is stupid. Right, let's get some more launches. Have I got? I do have two carryalls. I do want a third just for the just to have the numbers up. Who's that? That's the structure. So the the base starts about here. Okay. Goes out the scouts. Get a few of those, then I'll start building tanks. That's interesting. The harvesters are kind of driving off the refinery, but then getting picked up by the carrier. It's not quite the original behavior. Okay, he's ignoring my launcher. What's the minimum range? What happens with the minimum range? Okay, he just doesn't fire. So one of my units getting repaired. Oh. <clears throat> and then he gets... Right, so he deploys, but he then gets taken away. Okay, that works. And that really changes the dynamics of how this is going to work, too, because... Hmm. Because for every enemy unit that I damage, I have to kill it. Otherwise, it just gets picked up and taken back for a bit, and then dropped back off again. So I just get this continual battle. Okay, this is going to be cool. Let's start getting these guys down here. Right? It's, it, it's going to be a different... Oh my gosh. Okay, so they prioritize the heavy factory. He's gonna get away, which is fine. This tanky oh uh, yep. Unable to create more, I've hit the unit cap. Um This is not going the way I wanted it to. Let's get can't build rocket turrets yet, so we've got cannon turrets. Get him further away. And now I don't have any concrete. This is uncomfortable. 
Um, let's press on. That's their repair facility. Let's let's take out the turret. Get the repair facility down. I like this. I like that this has become the priority. And it happens at just the right time with rocket turret, uh, rocket tanks. Still hit the. Okay, I honestly think the unit cap is a little harsh. It is a bit harsh, and I know this game can, can be pushed a little bit further. Um, maybe a unit cap of 30? Would work. Why are you driving to it? We'll keep advancing with the tanks. I think the three launches is going to be enough to take out the structures. And then the tanks can deal with the infantry. Uh, I can't... Oh boy. I've got a launcher in there, and I can't retrieve it, because there's a quad on it. Thank you. So it still thinks, the game still thinks for some reason that there's a, a repair facility there, and it keeps dropping units on it. That's what's going on. Um, let's take out this. Keeping an eye on my base on the radar as well, by the way. a bit of scouting. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. We need to take care of that. Get our tanks attacking the turret here. So there's still definitely a problem. The game still thinks there's a structure somewhere that it can take units to. still being popped here for repair. Let's go up to the light factory now. Thanks will take care of that. Take care of the outpost. I don't think there's... There's still going to be the construction yard and yeah, there's the refinery. Oh, and the high tech, but we don't care too much about that. This is fun, this is... I'm definitely no longer testing a game, I'm now actually just playing it. This is working really well. And we've been going an hour and I've nearly taken out mission- Oh no, what's happening to my launcher? Get away from the turrets. Let's attack the turrets with the tanks, that makes sense. Okay, so things have gone wrong, and I've only got one launcher suddenly. This is uncomfortable. Cool, he's been dropped back. This is good. So where did my other launcher go? Did he get destroyed, or has he been... Oh, there you go. This is a problem I found in, in testing. I've now got a hyper tank. He's going to drive quickly, fire quickly, damage things a lot. He's going to be really useful now. Hmm. 
now. Oh, but I can't select that guy anymore. That's interesting. Okay, there's... We, we've had this whole discussion about that particular glitch um, and trying to reproduce it, trying to fix it, so... Why are you getting dropped off over... Oh, I guess you were there. Look, what I like about it is that it's kind of... It's an echo of the actual ghost tank glitch that is used for the Atreides Dune 2 speedrun. Is that it? Yes. Alright, mission 6. This has gone quick, quite quickly. We're, so that's five missions in essentially an hour. The last four, though, they're going to be a bit slower. So there's the spice. We're sort of in the middle of the map, but still on the bottom right, so the enemy base is going to be up here. Generally. Let's get some refineries down. So this mission, the major thing that we get is siege tanks. So instead of building combat tanks and, and launches, it'll be siege tanks and... Oh no! You are unwelcome. You are extremely unwelcome. Oh, the other cool thing we get is the starboard. Which lets us... buy units. A point. Right. Okay. I love the implementation so far of the repair facility. That just. That's beautiful. It just works. Working as intended. Now, I should be using the launcher to do this scouting. Please don't eat my harvesters today. Please and thanks. 23%, 37. Get it out there. The other thing we'll get in this mission is rocket turrets. Which we will want for base defense. Um, what do? Let's do that. Uh oh. Okay, what other options have I got for spice? There's all, all this. problem is, even with more harvesters, they're still going to come over here, naturally. Um, it's not till we have a few carriers flying around that we'll be able to sustain attacking over here, or mining over here, rather. Because left of their own devices, they will just drive to the nearest spice, and that's the end of it. But maybe with the carriers, I can force them over here, and then the carriol just ferries them back and forth there. I hope the logic is like that. He's just going to go to the nearest one, which is what makes sense. Let's get... Let's get a starport up, because that can give us some cheap carriers, maybe. And so the starport works. Yeah. Sorry, cat hair. Downside-outing cats. 
The starport works a little differently in Undune. The prices still fluctuate at about the about through the same amounts. Um, it's just the way in which things happen. Because instead of having, you know, ordering five units at once and needing all the money for that, it's kind of like another production structure. Seven nine eight. I don't like that price. So I won't start with that just yet. Okay, here's a very minor suggestion. The refinery shows some extra information. This shows some extra information. Factories don't, but this. There's plenty of room here. I want, like, time till next market shift or something. So that I can predict when I need to next look at some the prices. Because these prices are just like, I don't know, that'll be like 1% less or something. I may just have to... Oh no 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 no! Yes! My other harvest is going nearly full. Right, what next? I'm liking this. I'm liking having to keep an eye on the worm. It's terrifying. Prices have changed, but they've gotten worse. Uh, I'm just going to have to bite the bullet and start organizing a carryall here. I just have no choice. I need the money. I need the thing. So it's it's like a production structure. So it is building, and that will flash while it's building. Does it stop if I pause it? No. Did I just lose a harvester? So he's not going to the closest place, he's going back to where I told him to go. Nice. Okay, so for this mission we've got early carryalls, but it's not been an advantage. Get a repair up and up and going, and then we need the turrets. Yep. Okay, I'm liking this. Cool. Two carryalls. Only two harvesters. Yeah, slightly cheap harvester. It'll do. Is it zero? Is it twenty-five? Not quite enough. So the good thing is, even if the prices shift in the starport, this will keep building at the rate that was agreed at the time. But then, if I start building another one the same after the prices have shifted again, then the new one starts building at the new price. It's... It's unusual as a system, but it works. Oh, and because the carryalls are completely automatic, I don't need to fully enclose the repair anymore. 
which is nice. Um, I actually forgot that was building, which is why I've not got that uh, that harvester out now. That's silly of me. Have the prices changed again? They have. They've gotten. No, no, they haven't. Cool. Actually, if I tell that to go, it gets picked up and dropped off. Ah, uh, so it's not quite getting him flown to the spice field, but that was a bit of a shortcut. Now, alright. Have to build an outpost before we can build turrets. I'm not sure that's the original build queue, but original tech tree rather. I could be wrong. It's been a little while since I played just playing Dune 2. I don't know why you were driving, but okay. Cool. We're gonna need one more wind trap. Yep, yeah, now we can build the turrets. Yeah, I really feel like I screwed up the start of this level. I think I... I gambled and lost on carryalls. That is so cheap. I'm going to start building one now. I gambled and lost on the prices of carryalls. So that's at parity. But it's telling me I need another wind trap. Okay. Yep, this is slow. still only have the three harvesters. So while these are cheap, we'll get another one going. I wonder how it picks which carryall to use. Looks like it's just the, the closest one. You are going to come and harvest over here, just to be safe. Now the turrets! I think for this mission, if I'd rushed more towards getting offensive units up, that might have been a better solution. Did I? Yeah, I did get some of these. Let's get them moving. I think with this map, there's an enemy base up here, and then there's a slightly bigger one up here. I think that's the way around this is. The map I recognize. Um, and the way these maps are built are with the, um, the construction yard near the top of each. So to win this map, normally you'd assault from your base all the way north and then go east and west. There's a heavy factory anyway. Refinery, move. Uh, I can't tell him to move. Okay. So I stopped being able to command the unit once he was getting picked up for repair.
Oh, this is deeply uncomfortable. At least with the target prioritization, I can get away with putting rocket turrets in particular places. And not have to have like a bank up here and then a bank up here, each facing the two different bases. I'm going to leave them in an array around this, sort of like a bowl sort of thing. Why even? Let's get a little smart about this. Let's make him drive pretty far. Holy crap, we are getting attacked pretty badly here. Did that turret just fire on the carryall? Is that what just happened? Okay, so in theory, these turrets should take care of any units by the time they're in range of the heavy factory. That, at least, is my hope. I think there's a heavy factory on both sides, but I don't know if... If they build from both. Quad. Let's get the quad out here. Oh, hello. Let's get the quad attacking these guys. Yes! The turrets are attacking the carryalls and they take visible damage. That is awesome. Oh, he didn't get far. No, wait, that was... No, this is my quad. It was stacked on a tank. Yeah, okay, so they just kind of stop driving once they get attacked. Okay, is he going to get dropped off in the same place and then... What? What? Did he just explode when he got dropped off? My, my quad is gone. I think possibly he took damage at the last possible moment while he was being picked up. Something funny happened there. Alright, let's get some launches up. Let's get these tanks rolling.
I think that guy was EOA. He exploded on arrival. Okay, let's trust the... Let's trust in the rocket turrets and these two very brave young combat tanks. Yeah, I'm happy with this state of affairs now. Right. Uh, I need silos. Okay, let's just... Let's keep building stuff here. That should be enough. Let's get some stuff happening. I like the way this is happening. That's a rocket turret. That's just going to be a cannon turret. Yep. That's just a funny um, artifact of the original map in June 2. They left one turret as regular cannon turret, I guess to make assaulting this place a little easier. Okay, let's get these guys on the refinery. Guys are taking the factory. Go for the war now. Okay, I think sometimes they end up trying to drive to a thing rather than actually attacking it. What's my base doing? Nothing red near my base. this pesky little thing. Come and take him away, please. Thank you. Move him away. It's lost. Okay, I think this is working basically as you'd expect. I'm starting to lose missile tanks in this assault because I'm not um, I'm not protecting them well enough with my sieges. This is this is working for me. Yeah, if I tell them to attack something that's still under fog of war, it's like he drives to it rather than uh, attacking it. I think that's what's going on there. Uh, I'm probably going to lose that missile tank. And that turret I probably don't need to attack. Let's... Okay, that's that's a space basically destroyed, so let's get these guys moving up the middle again. Hit the production line go oh and I've I don't I've hit the unit cap. Okay, so with the way this is balanced at the moment, it feels like as long as you've got a repair facility 
and some carryalls. Let's build all the carryall. Oh, it's going to be cheap too. I can't build because I've hit the unit cap. That was silly of me. I think as long as he could maintain the repair facility at home, then you've got a pretty solid uh, attacking force that's just going to be well supported. That may be why the enemy tends to prioritize the repair facility in the original Dune 2, possibly because it should be such a strategic target, because it basically just saves the life of every tank that gets damaged. Um, the actual logic could also simply be that it's the most expensive structure most of the time. That could be what's going on there, of course. Let's try. Yep. So if you tell a unit to attack a structure and by doing that and, and do that by clicking on a part of the structure that's still under fog of war. Uh, the result of that is that it just drives to the place that you clicked rather than attacking. Now this is going to start getting a little more awkward. Because the UI itself is kind of going to fight me a bit. Gonna get picked up to repair. So the, the, the siege tanks are just so implacable, they're never going to get lost in battle. How we're doing this doesn't feel quite as quick. And I'm definitely still seeing units being dropped on top of other units. I think because the the drop location for the carriers just doesn't quite get updated. Oh this is funny. This is this is in the original game. This particular map, the uh, high-tech facility, is actually genuinely placed partially off the map. Okay, don't really know who's attacking what now. Is that it? That's it. Okay, that was a long mission. But now it changes again. This is now mission 7? It's not where I wanted to click, but okay. Alright, from memory, this is only a tiny little patch, and there's, yeah, there's more spice up here. Concrete placement, Tim. So, get the refinery down. ghosting work? Uh, no. So that is entirely a Dune 2 glitch only. But there are some... 
there are some other funny things going on here, um, which hopefully which will get fixed at some point. Also, welcome, Radis. Um, this guy holds the current world record for the Atreides campaign, start to finish, in Dune 2. So, you're very welcome on my stream, mate. So this is Undune 2. This is a... Uh, he calls it a demake. It's kind of, kind of like a cute little clone of Dune 2 for the Pico 8 platform. That's an older reference, but it checks out. Let's get... Harvesters. Because that's where I screwed up in the last one. I took way too long building up the economy. That's a lot of money makers, and that's a worm. Alright. So for the last mission of what we have to keep rocket turrets really close in to properly defend things. is the highest. I mean as well. Yes, there are some sneak attacks now. New in uh, in this version of the game. What am I going to do here? I am going to put that there. Of course, because it's mission seven, we get the House of Vix and we get uh, Sonic tanks. Anyone, anyone, money, please? Um, so the, the, the sandworms in on Dune are a very different beast to how they work in Dune 2. You cannot target them, you cannot damage them. They don't go away... ...depending on how many units they've eaten. They are just unstoppable. It really reduces this game back to, back to its core of... Don't leave stuff on sand, it will get eaten. Um, what are we doing next? We've got plenty of power. Let's get the X down, let's get some Sonic tanks on the field. Don't really need to do all this exploration, but... Sonic Rangers depends on... No, it doesn't. Um, in fact, there is no game speed option. This is a very... a much more basic... Uh, platform. There's no speed to anything. Let's get a Sonic tank started. Let's get these guys... Oh. Going for a stroll. Go for a stroll, please. There, let it go. Now... Before I get the starboard up, let's get something in this little hole here. Oh, hello! Um, not cool. Oh, and I didn't get him destroyed fast enough, so he's been taken away. Oh boy.
Cool thing is you can tell harvesters to essentially stack on a refinery, so he's just going to wait patiently until this guy's finished. So that's just a continual stream of money coming in now. Okay, we're going to get a cheap carry all or two. And we're going to lose radar because we're out of power. It's not where I wanted to click. Radar back. Let's carry all out. What are the prices like? Price is still low, yep. Let's get a second one going. So what happens? Right, so that's how that happens. So if you have a harvester already driving to the refinery, and then the carrier comes and drops the second one on top, they just sort of, sort of stack. He's getting attacked, this guy. Oh, that was painful. Right, how are we doing? Let's get him in. So Sonic tanks work like pretty conventional tanks in this game. There's no, they don't. There's no line of, line of sight damage or anything like that. So they just, you don't have to worry so much about their placement. Ha! Huh. Okay, the, ama the amazing disappear and carry all, but whatever. He probably turned to jinx out. Right, now we got some money. We got some economy going. Let's get some turrets down. Keep plugging it away. Let's all focus on this. We cannot allow them to repair that. Right. Fortunately, we can repair and build at the same time. Ah. Uh, We have just not enough money for that. Okay, he's not going home. The carriers do get attacked by the turrets. That is so good. And everyone's sort of automatically attacking. This is this is what I keep saying about um, the game feeling more automatic. Just the base defense just kind of happens on its own. Ah, Deviator. Is he going to attack the heavy factory? Because that would be silly. He is. Okay, the Deviators need to not attack structures. They need to attack units. Because there's no way to deviate a structure, I hope. Because that would be bad. Alright, let's do a bit more scouting with this quad. Um, that's not going to work as great as I would hope. Just because of the... Um, if he gets dropped to the repair threshold, he's just going to stop and I'm not going to be able to move. And that's still a bug that I think hopefully will get fixed. Oh, Raider Track. You came to the wrong neighborhood, sir. Um, actually, what we should be doing this guy is finding where the rock is to stage from. Getting a bit ambitious there, mate. Come back. <laughs> um... 
It's going to be that rock if we do a head on assault. But let's see if we can try and find a little bit more about this base. If I had a high tech build, I could be building um, Ornithopters at this point. But they, like in the original game, they don't do a whole lot. They're not really that crucial a unit. And I'm not sure they're useful for scouting either because they don't attack stuff that isn't already revealed. Okay, that was useful. And sometimes the turrets don't attack because is there's a lot going on on screen. It's it's still it, it's a kind of pathfinding for them still. Oh cool, but he's gonna survive. I haven't built a repair facility yet. Um. Yeah, we'll do. Nice, so he's this guy's just been dropped back down on an empty spice field because it's been finished by his friends and he's just moved on. I am very nervous about them being so close to the sandworm. for that matter. No, I'm gonna lose units. I think he just got eaten, but then he didn't. I don't know what happened there. Let's get the repair facility down so my poor little quad gets picked up. Unless it doesn't register because you hit the threshold after, uh, before the repair was placed. Oh, well, let's use him for a bit more light scouting. Okay, that's very useful. This pod of base we definitely go after first. There'll be another one down here somewhere. Here we go. Yep. And there he goes. Yep, that's working fine, Paul. That's that's brilliant. to move these, but I don't think I have a good staging spot. Okay, so definitely units being placed. Um, I've driven them all away at the worst possible time. Units being placed is getting confused with the carry-all system. Kill him. Why is he not... Have I taken... Have, have my turrets taken out all the uh, enemy carryalls? Because that's unexpected, but welcome. I'm wondering if it's still... If it's not still a good idea to have... Uh, launches. Because uh, the, the Sonic tanks should have the same range as launches. But maybe their range is shortened. Yes. Which is a good decision too. Yep, 
Yep, this is working beautifully. Let's get these tanks out here. Oh, that harvester was short lived. We definitely don't need missile launchers. Just a cloud of sonics is absolutely doing the job. I guess they're like missile launchers with a slightly shorter range but no minimum range. Uh, effectively. Ah, uh, now there's this awful cluster of accidental defensive units all around the repair facility. Let's get them sort of eaten away a bit. Get some shots on this turret because we're going to drive straight past there. Yeah, th this is this is a beautiful game in its own little way. It really is. I don't even really need the siege tanks quite so much. Oh, that was a dumb place to stop them all. Yeah, we're gonna use the we're gonna use the siege tanks to scout. Beautiful. Siege tanks can scout and take care of the other units. Whereas the Sonics are my assault force. Ouch. Oh, there's another one. I like this. The In the original game, rocket turrets would just be utter death to most units, especially because of the, uh, the camera glitch, where stuff that's off-screen doesn't get... Um, oh, that's interesting. They've built a um, ornithopter. Sorry from what I'm saying is starting to become a bit disjointed. I'm actually at the point of this game where it's a little bit... It takes a lot of concentration. And a whole lot of thinking. I'm going to need these guys to move down here, because that's a massive bit of rock. Squish, squish, squish. Turret. Bring these guys down.
ど。Okay, the structure repairs being a little slower is definitely working here.、Um, everything is pretty well balanced. And I think the implementation, as is, of the,、um, the repair situation is t working better than, the, than in the original. I'll put it that way. It's, it's working as intended. That. that is going to be the last structure. That's it, an hour 50, and that is mission 7. Two more missions to go. Need a drink. Right. I still think it's needlessly cruel to put mission 8. On this map. Because this is the hardest map, in my opinion, of the entire game. <laughs> I'm clicking down trying to get to the.、Um, to build the refinery. I'm getting ahead of myself here.、Um, this is what I consider to be the hardest map in the entire game because one base is up here, the other one is down here on the radar. Um, you're kind of squished between them. And you have to be very careful about exploring. It's very easy to dislodge one or the other.、Uh, it's a little bit easier in Undune simply because of the way everything works in this game instead. But then there's also the, 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 the formation of a rock, it's, it's tough. Oh, you're off to bed? No worries, mate. Thanks for hanging out.、Um, thanks for the game. This is cool. Hope you can catch up later. And then the worms, of course. The worms are going to make it even more awful because that's. <gasps> okay. Right. What do we need? Yeah, there it goes. I don't know what to suggest about that. I would say maybe. Maybe hide the worms for a little bit. Don't let them appear for like the first five minutes or something. The worm's the worm, because I think there's only the one on the map. Still figuring out what, what if any, strategy works、um, to get around those. Because now I have to build another harvester. You only get a free replacement harvester if you lose your last one. And I'm not even 100% sure if that's been implemented. But I think there's a good chance we're going to have to find out. Next, I think, I think it makes sense to build another harvester. Let's, yeah, let's, let's focus on the economy. Then to get some radar up. 
then and then rush the slimming tanks. Please don't. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I want to scout down here, but I can't because the enemy base is just like right here. Maybe if I get another refinery out here. Oh no. I'm already getting attacked. Uh, yep, yeah, let's pop that up there. Let's get... a radar up. The economy is going to steam along shortly once we've got some um, the first major lot of stuff in stuff spice. So I want wind trap for power for radar. I'm going to plop down an X, and then I'm just going to start pumping out slanic tanks. I think our economy is going to be fine without carryalls for a little bit. And getting solid defensive stuff up in place is key right now. Um, probably with some rocket turrets, hey. Percent sixty-three. Useful. Let me hit you. Right. Still not going to bother trying to use autothopters. So the next thing, after some more power, it's going to be a starport. So we can try and get some cheap carriers. Pretty good. Not great. Not terrible. First carry all is out. Prices are still not great. I'm gonna wait a bit. Let's start getting some offensive stuff. So, um, those were auto's units down here. 
I definitely want to take care of the Harkonnens first, because they this is the level where we start getting the palace. And the Harkonnen palace is not a kind thing. With that in mind... Yes, that's beautiful and cheap. In fact, while prices are cheap, let's reserve an MCV as well. Yes, that's worked out exactly as I wanted it to. That guy in... This is pretty full. Okay. Scout's already getting absolutely ruined. Yep, and that is why the Harkonnens are scary. That was almost certainly a Death Sand missile. Another 600 credits down the can. Yeah, you should be attacking. Please? Oh, they're going after the construction yard. That is diabolical. Uh, I have no money. Get him dropped off. Get him dropped off. Good. Oh, they're going for the construction yard because I've lost my heavy factory, that's why. Fortunately, there's no upgrades in this. Um, okay. We're also going to need a repair facility in order to do this assault quickly, easily. I really like that the, the repair facility has become such a awesome strategic thing in this game. It's, it really is good. I'm going to need this to be building sonic tanks. They still only got the one carrier? Yes, they do. Because that never... I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. Let's get that MCV moving. Defensive units up here. Oh, I do have two carriers. Well, I do now anyway. MCV. Let's go into a very safe little spot over there. Repair facility goes there. Now the assault begins. Crap. Okay, don't just drive around it. Okay, good. This is interesting because the launchers have become very useful for uh, base defense. Which they absolutely were not in June 2. In June 2 they were an absolute liability. You would avoid having them anywhere near the base if you could. Assault group here. Move my defensive guys off there a little bit. Okay, let's pop some rocket turrets down. Why aren't you driving up there?
Okay, harvesters sometimes aren't getting picked up. They're just driving back. I don't know why. It seems a little inconsistent. <laughs> oh boy. That's the first Devastator. Holy crap, that's got a lot of hit points. Yeah, thanks MCV. You 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 go and attack him. For sure. There it goes. Okay, we've hit the unit cap. That's bad. So the devastators in this game, clearly they move very, very slowly. Um I guess that hit the construction yard. So devastators move slowly. Um, their big explosion when they die isn't implemented. So they're not actually that terrifying. They just take a lot of damage. They're very hard to kill. Good. the siege tank to scout a little bit. Okay. Alright. Go for that turret too. Splice loss build silos. Well we're at the unit cap, so not much we can do there. for where okay so after oh that that sucks I think we're gonna have to pull back for a moment <sighs> yep that launcher is devastating wow really was devastating. That's the wall that's a... That's just rock. Is anyone going to pick up my siege tank there? We're going to take at least one more missile. Okay, let's deal with this guy once and for all here. Oh crap. They don't just drive over me. Yep, getting close. Let's take out this.
Unfortunately, it doesn't take forever to reinforce across the map. Let's get... Because we've got the money to burn, let's get another heavy factory up. Another auto's autothopter, but I'm going to ignore it. Don't have time to even think about that. The rocket turrets can take care of that. The important thing is to get churning out tanks. These soldiers can just go. go and die, honestly. They're just taking up my unit cap. Speaking of. Ah, oh, crap, this is a bad forward position for you. Cool. They're not getting that back. Let's take out the light factory. Where is this going? Glad I built another factory. That though will be the last, the last missile to go out. Is that right there? Is the palace? So am I going to take that out in a moment? Well, my turrets are in fact taking care of the Ornithopters. There goes the Harkonnen Palace, so no more missiles coming my way. That's a Devastator. And a Deviator. Who will do less than hoped. Get this turret out of the way. Take the deviator. I'm not sure if he can fire over these walls. He probably can't, that's why he's driving so far. So interestingly, the autos are attacking my units up here. I wonder what the logic is behind that. As opposed to my base, sort of thing. Speaking of, what else is there of this base, or is that the end? That's the end. Okay. To go to about the midpoint down here. So we're done with this base. Oh. Okay, we might lose one tank. No. Hey, this is working well. The autos have failed to stop us.
Don't go that way. Sort the unit cap because of these guys. Still gonna repair that. So we're at 2 hours 15, I don't know that we're going to get the mission 9 done in 15 minutes. This this one feels like it's taken about half an hour. So mission 9 could take 35-40 minutes. Something up here. Unwelcome things, but I think I think my launchers are dealing with it. Yep. I might be losing units here. I've... That's a deviated sonic tank. Yeah, let's let's get everyone driving down around here. Cause this wall is a bit too big to blow through. And this is a good target. Take out the deviator. Got this very visible siege tank. What's happening at the base? Good stuff. He's driving back to repair. I don't think I want you to do that. Come back. Right, he's driving off. So there's no Auto's Palace in this mission. Uh, mission 8. Mission 8 normally has two different maps that you can pick from. Whichever one you pick has a particular other house in its territory. And that other house, the primary one, has the palace in it. Um, you don't get a choice, really. Uh, you don't you don't get to pick which map you're playing on in this game. It's, it's a bit too small a game to allow that sort of thing. Okay, so that harvester thinks he's basically on a uh, on a refinery, so I can't actually target him. Let's get some scouting done. Okay, so it's just this bank of wind traps here, and then there's all base over here. Slightly out of range of that rocket turret. Out of range, I said. Alright, we're at the bottom of the map here. Cool. That's that portion of the base taken care of. assaulting this refinery here. So I 
have my carriels. Carriels and white carriels have not taken any damage. I guess they've been lucky. Um, we're getting unlucky though. With the sheer number of siege tanks that are here. This is bad. Because every time I tell my guys to attack one, they end up following it away when it retreats. Oh boy, this is tense. I'm not going to lose this one, there's no way I can lose it, but I will probably lose more uh, Slonic tanks. down here. Yeah, you know what? Okay, let's just, let's go attack that. All the liable to lose more things here. Crap, there's so many turrets in this base. Another DOA unit drop there. Get the construction yard out of the way. It's almost the end of the uh, end of the base. I think I'm just going to start building some more. So uh, no, I can't. I'm still at the unit cap. Let's bring this siege tank down then, because we're we're pretty low on units. Gonna have to deal with these these turrets. After this turret, finish off this siege tank. Then we go out to this light factory because there's too many light units here. Oh, and there's another turret! These two structures are it. This is the end of this mission. It's one. Oh boy. Thirty two minutes. Mission 9, this is it, this is it. And it's this familiar old, thoroughly awful map. We do, however, start with a lot more money than in the original game. I think by the time you end up at this particular map, um, you start with like 1200 credits or something. Well, they've already taken care of the spice bloom there. Let's. Why did I put that down there? I needed the spice there. I'm gonna have to start standing up occasionally and stretching. This is becoming difficult.
Okay. I'm gonna start building concrete out to here. Get a second refinery up here. start building down here. That will probably be the starport. I'm going to... what am I going to do? Actually, we'll go all it here. So the next thing we're going to do is build a bunch more harvesters, as usual. Oh no, are we already getting attacked? No, we're not. What was that? It's an autothopter already! That's not right. I don't have a way to defend against that. Oh no, now that I've placed that, it's going to attack that. That is too early for an ornithopter attack. Fortunately at the moment, I don't think these turrets actually take any power. <laughs> yep. That's what you get. Um, that's throwing a spanner in the works. I've got enough defense here now to be safe, I think. That's quite high defensive value. But I'm going to want to bring my stronger units back closer in the shore. All right. some harvesting on the way. You get a bit more scouting out. All the enemy bases are arranged in like a giant U shape around the, uh, the other side of the map. So this space should be fairly clear for us to scout out. So we can watch over it a little bit better. Speaking of watching, the next thing we're going to need is some power. And we'll grab another wind trap as well, just to secure it for the time being. It's 
gonna be a while before I can get carryalls into um make the spice more efficient. Oop, here we go. Welcome to Regretsville. Population, that guy. Alright, that's my other one of those. Now, because we're facing, we're actually facing every other house. So the Harkonnens, the Yordos, and the Emperor, and the Sardaukar. So we have three there to protect against, including two missiles. So, next priority is getting a backup for the construction yard. This is what I did with the uh, the previous mission as well, and it's it's pretty crucial to have that just in case the construction yard does get targeted. Because I think it does go in one shot. It might survive one shot. I'm not entirely sure, but I'm not basing a speed run on might. Oh, you may as well come home. That's building. We got power, got defenses. What do we need next? X. <laughs> so now we can build Sonics once the MCV is done. MCV, he can go with this little, this little bit of rock here. Bring the missile launcher back in. What are we doing for power? Pretty good. So let's get a starport down so we can start getting some carryalls. Good, prices are good. Ish. Prices are even better now. That's good. That's about as cheap as they get. This is the same. Let's get a third one. Let's just go for it while they're still cheap. Why are you driving? Three carryalls. Now the repair facility, that's going to go down here. Got a nice cluster of targets here, unfortunately. Ideally we'd get another heavy factory um, out somewhere, but we're running out of room to put stuff behind turrets. That's just the way it's going to be. 23, that's enough. There are 54, you can come in too.
Cool. Alright, that's the repair. I'm going to put another heavy factory over here. Because this should become, because this is the highest value structure, this should become the target for missiles. And having the two heavy factories will give us the ability to A, not lose the entire building production if one gets hit by a missile, and two, faster production. I'm not sure what that was. You're at 11. Right. This is going better than the previous mission. Because aside from the couple of ornithopters we've had, we've been fairly um, undisturbed. Right, let's get some Sonics up and in that corner. Oh, stacked tanks, lovely. We'll throw in a couple of... No, we'll keep the launchers. I'll keep two siege tanks for base defense. I'll keep the launcher as well. MCV stays there. Oh, that's the... Okay, that's nasty. So these shouldn't actually be here. This bank of four rocket turrets. And there's another one about here as well. And essentially they should not be there. Because this is the Atreides Mission 9. And it's only the Harkonnen one that they're actually there. But I guess as a limitation of this game... That's not going to be shown. You're not going to get a different map for all different all three houses. All right, chase him. Okay, this is going to work well. I'm going to put him there, actually. One, you can come in, give us some money. 12. 79. You him up as well. churning out Sonic tanks. I'm surprised I haven't hit the unit cap yet. I imagine I will do shortly. This might be enough tanks to start assaulting this position. Let's go. They don't get rebuilt anyway, so it doesn't matter. Oh, it's already aiming to fire. That's great. Okay. Devastators are in fact devastating. Don't let him get away. He's away. Okay. Right.
Who will fit the unit cap? The Devastators put out a ton of damage. Uh, let's get this guy scouting again. Actually, he can help with this turret. Actually, any of these harvesters a good target? That one. Okay, I got a construction yard right there. We got a lot of targets. Let's get that heavy factory rebuilt. We're at the unit cap still, but it's useful to have them as like a uh, a decoy target essentially. Get some of these guys up here, some along this way. This is going surprisingly well. Alright, fine, you want to go up there, whatever. with how that's going. Let's get this rocket turret sorted. Cool. My siege tank I think just got taken off for repair. It's fine. Right, Harkonne Palace, take it down. Excellent. Pop out some enemy units here. Still the unit. Start taking this down. Continue scouting with the siege tank. Holy crap, there's a lot of quads here. Why is there a lot of quads here? Are they just getting built and not getting move orders? Okay, siege tank can come back now. Is the next priority. Something just blew up on my base. That was the... That was the repair. Crap, that's bad. Okay, this is where our attack starts to stall a little bit.
Yep, this is this is going badly. I'm about to lose two tanks. Or one. Okay, we have a much smaller force here now. Um, what can we do? We can take out this turret. Yeah, let's drive these guys straight up. So the Cytocar Palace will be buried in here. That's why there's so, so many rocket turrets surrounding it. guys moving up. Let's move some of these guys up as well. The siege tank and the rocket launcher. Just because the base defense side of this is becoming a little less important. There's that. Hey, maybe I will break uh, three hours. That would be nice. Okay. Let's get this turret under attack. Get these guys in here. These guys as well. Each tank will literally tank the damage from these guys. These ones back here can start attacking this turret. Especially with that launcher, he's gonna be useful. Right, let's get it, let's get this palace down. Are there any more units coming in? No. God, I can barely see for the smoke. Okay, we do have two siege tanks. We're going to scout with this guy. Okay. Let's duck in with some sliding tanks up here. Take out these last couple of buildings and then we'll sweep south. Drive in there. Okay, we'll leave it to those two. See if we can avoid the, the other bank of four rocket turrets that are roughly in the middle of the map. Let's rush over here. Not with that. And attack this turret. It's a handy rocket launcher. Yeah, there's, there's the other turrets that I'm talking about. Oh, this is going really well. It can be hard to tell a unit to attack another particular unit when they're moving. Especially when they're one of the faster units. Like, I've just told something to attack this bit of wall, and I'm not entirely sure what. Get 
these guys through the gaps. Oh no, and that's a sandworm. Get off the... Oh my gosh. That is diabolical. Let's go a little bit. Are there any more turrets over here? Yes. A couple. Yeah, let's get these units. Oh, that's a lot of soldiers. What are you going to go squish? Turret. This turret. And start attacking these structures with these guys that are up here. Yep, definitely hoping to break the three hour mark. And I'm sorry I've not sized the timer correctly on my stream. It's been a little while since I've done a proper timed run of anything. guys a little further south. Oh, the Auto's Palace. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of turrets down here, I think. And there are a lot of Auto's units over here. That's interesting, the top two are sort of car turrets, the bottom two are autos. I'm not sure that's correct. Strictly speaking. Take out the devastator, no, devastator, deviator. And I'm sorry, my narration of this is just absolutely good to shit. Um, I am absolutely just trying to get this done as possible as well. I am just... And I think maybe my units are starting to not behave? It's hard to tell. I think everything's working as it should be. As in units having trouble responding to commands. Um, that was an issue in earlier versions of this, but as basically being fixed. Okay, there that goes. Now we go after these turrets. These guys over here just keep mopping up structures here. And drive there, attack it. There's a lot of smoke down here. A lot of units that I've I've damaged and that they have then retreated. I've just lost some more units to the to the sandworm. It's still causing. It is still a, a strategic thing. I love it. All right. A bit more scouting. Let's attack these turrets. Oh, hello.
Okay, he's damaged, that's why he's not moving. Turret. My units are being whittled away. Uh, the Spice Bloom should probably not show up as blue. I think they were red in the original game. Maybe a different colour entirely would be good. Yeah, so that got taken out. Um, I think I've maybe lost some carryalls. It's expensive, but whatever. And I'm still at the unit cap. How am I still at the unit cap? Don't understand. Both of my sieges are quite damaged now. That out. Okay, we're down to the last few structures here. Um, yeah, we're nearly we're nearly done. Come on. Time finishes when we get the last mission complete. There it is. Undune 2. First proper speedrun that I know of. Uh, 2 hours 56 46. Boy, was that fun. Congratulations. Now though, my absolute favorite feature of this game, this is added in this version. Is the credit screen. Thank you, Paul, for this brilliant, brilliant game. Um, and yeah, that's me. That's my name right there under playtesting. Thank you to all the supporters as well. This is... You've really helped build a really cool thing here. making of a dynasty. I love it. Cool. Thank you everyone for watching. This has been absolute fun. Um, I don't know when I'll stream next or even what I'll stream. I've got some ideas in the works, but we'll see what happens. Um... I'm going to finish up. This has been a three hour stream. I am in need of some lunch. <laughs>